What's going on, y'all? What it is? So let's go ahead and slide on these topics. And the first thing I want to discuss is this despicable thing that took place over there in France. So guys, you just know that the USA basketball team just won gold against France. And so about an hour after the men captured that Covenant US gold medal, Steph's wife, Aisha, and along with Steph's mother, Sonya, they tried to cross the road. They were leaving the event and they tried to cross the road to get to their car. And they also had Steph and Aisha's little one who just happens to be only three to four months old. And so I apologize in advance if I botched the little one's name, but I believe it's pronounced K as Sha Curry. Again, I apologize if I screwed that up. But as the Currys was trying to cross the street with the little one to get to their car, they were almost apprehended by the police. So they were stopped, they were questioned and things of that nature, and things went left, they went haywire. And so things started to get heated. They had a conversation back and forth and things like that, a heated conversation. And then they're saying that the popo ended up putting paws on the little one. Insane, right? So what I want to do right here is play you guys these clips, and then I'll come back and give you my thoughts. This is so heartbreaking. Aisha Curry cries after a French police officer allegedly hit her four-month-old baby, her son, in the head. Here's a clip of the aftermath after the alleged incident. The baby. She, she, I don't so footage recently posted by The Hollywood Fix shows Stephen Curry's family involved in an altercation with the French police. Draymond Green can also be seen arguing with the police. In the previous clip, Stephen Curry's mother, Sonia, can be seen also arguing with the few French police officers, alleging that Stephen and Aisha's baby was hit in the head although it remains unclear as to who was responsible for the incident but there is a clip of a man apologizing possibly a translator here's the clip take a look sorry, sorry that we apologize if there's anything you do to make it better then you go let us get to our car. So the incident reportedly started when the Curry family was stopped at the side of the road by French police. While they were trying to cross the road to get to their vehicle or driver, Sonia can be heard explaining it to the policeman present a spot that all she and her family is trying to do is get to the place where their vehicle is parked and their driver is waiting for them. The policeman apparently refused to let the Curry family cross the road. Sonia can also be seen explaining how the authorities present at the spot were denying the driver a chance to come outside and meet them on the road how about help us sonya said to the policeman as aisha curry could be seen wiping tears after a while draymond green also joined the curry family and he was seemingly agitated with what he had learned about steph and aisha's baby so even after him hitting the baby in the head there's still nothing y'all can do to get them out of here this is so sad and heartbreaking now i'm curious to know what are y'all thoughts on this whole situation let me know your thoughts in the comments that's it for this one i'm out well francie did it this time don't think you'll be hosting the Olympics anytime soon. Already had bad reviews about the Olympics in France. Already. But guys, this took the cake. So Aisha Curry and Steph Curry's mom was going to their car and allegedly a police officer hit the three-month baby in the head. You heard me right. Actually hit the baby in the head trying to keep them from getting to their vehicle. Guys, when I tell you this is out of hand, this is crazy. Steph Curry's mom is throwing a fit. Aisha Curry's in tears. And Draymond Green actually came in to try to bring some sense to the situation. But they wasn't trying to hear it. Take a look at this guy. All right, so you guys just seen and heard that. Now listen to me, guys. I want you all to hear me out. Call me petty. I do have a petty mind at times, but I think that this was done on purpose. Curry just scored 24 points in the gold medal game. He hit seven three-pointers. He was the driving force. And on top of that, with Curry hitting a barrage of threes late in the fourth quarter to seal the deal. And then on top of that, he's going to do his signature taunt, the night-night thing. I believe that France took offense to that. A lot of people were upset because not only did USA win the game, they won the game in France. So there's a lot of disappointed people within France. And in my humble opinion, including this PO, now, I don't know his intentions, so I'm going to say allegedly, right? But 
it would be hard for me to believe, I'm hard pressed to believe that you don't know the global superstar that Steph Curry is and you don't know his family, right? And there's a possibility that he don't know who Steph Curry is, right? Now understand when I say that I believe that this PO knows who Steph Curry is and his family, I'm not saying that he knows them like that. I'm speaking from the standpoint that Steph is a whole huge brand out here, including his wife and his entire family. So it's in my estimation that this PO knows of them. And I just feel that they were targeted just because Steph had a very outstanding performance and because he taunted them like he does the players over here in the US in the NBA. And so I think that in a very short amount of time that those POs over there in France, they're going to hear from the Curry's lawyers because there's no way you can piece this up just with a simple I'm sorry and I apologize. There's no way. And shout out to his teammate Draymond Green for standing on business and confronting them as well. That's a real teammate. That's a real friend. So shout out to Draymond. But anyway, let's transition and talk about Keon Henderson. Now notice I left the word pastor off or the title pastor off rather based off of the fact because I don't believe that he deserves that title. Now we know that he's married to Shawnee O'Neal. I always thought that Shawnee O'Neal was corrupt. Her nostrils gave it away. And this is the thing. I don't respect her, especially now when the rapper Loose Cannon came out and said that you paid him $50,000 for one more smash before you got married to Keon. You didn't try to sue him for defamation or anything. So it lets me believe that that was true. And so I don't have no respect for you. You went and let the homie smash before you went into the pool pit with your husband. That's crazy. Or you've been in the pool pit, but you're really solidified in the pool pit once you married your husband and you did that. How can I respect you? But anyway, guys, he's out here begging for money. So Keon says that God gave him a vision that all 20,000 of his members were going to donate $2,100 to him in the span of 21 days to repair damages from a prior hurricane. And basically what he said was, is that he has insurance, but the insurance is not going to cover all the costs. And so he's asking all of his members to pitch in to renovate and improve the conditions of the Lighthouse Church. Now, he claims that he had to turn away a lot of members based off of the conditions of the church once the hurricane hit. And he's saying that the church took a significant hit. And this is why God gave him this vision to build the church back up. Now, I want you guys to take a look at these clips and I'll be right back. Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Millie Chine. Um, I'm going to do the Real Housewives of New Jersey tomorrow. I'm getting ready to go to the movies. And Big Brother is just now coming on because the show 60 Minutes actually goes longer than 60 minutes but i gotta talk about this pastor keon henderson has asked his church members to donate 4.4 million dollars to help rebuild his church that was damaged in this past hurricane now what he said was he wanted his close to 20,000 members to pledge 2100 dollars a piece right in 21 days so the publication that put this information out that's why they said he asked for $4.4 million. He said that he didn't do the math. So he added it up and he said, oh yeah, that's $4.4 million. Now he said that God came to him with this number. That's what he said. But then he was like, I had to think about it. What if they don't have $2,100? Pledge $21. Now... He went on to say that the damages cost $20 million. So you want 21, you want 20,000 people roughly to pay $2,100 for the, in 21 days. That equals 4.4, but you need 20 million. What kind of math is that? As crazy as this post is. Because a lot of people were asking, doesn't he have insurance? Yeah, you should have your church insured. But y'all, please take a first class flight to these comments. Because they are amazing. I knew somebody was going to say something about that lady that was having the Holy Spirit. And he told her to be quiet. This lady right here said, the Lord gave that lady in your church the Holy Spirit. And you told her to be quiet. Now you do the same. And right down here. These comments did not disappoint. <laughs> Somebody said, get it from your wife. Her ex-husband left y'all well off. And the one below that, Keon, I want you to turn to your wife and say, neighbor. <laughs> God said 
tap your wife's shoulders. And at the very bottom, don't you have insurance to rebuild? He has to have insurance, correct? Now, of course, there were people in the comments that were saying how he's helped people with their rent. He's helped them pay their bills. And I'm sure he has as a minister, right? But he does have insurance. At least he should. He should have insurance. Hey, y'all, what's up? Good afternoon, mother so let me tell y'all what I just saw. I just saw Pastor Keon Henderson, a video of him asking 2,100 people in his church to donate $2,100 each over the next 21 days to help build a church. This man said that God told him to ask for this. Now, one thing I know about the church or one thing I've learned about the church or one thing they used to preach back in the day about the church is the church was here to help the damn people. Meaning if you needed some help, you would go to the church and get it. Now, one thing I know that the church don't do if a motherfucker was hungry, you could not walk up in one of them damn churches, take any money at that collection plate and go to the grocery store and buy yourself some groceries. I don't like the fact that in a time like this, where the struggle is real, that a pastor will come out his mouth asking for money to build a new church because what the What's wrong with the church he currently have is the plumbing going bad is the roof leaking because those things can be fixed why do you need a mega church and then he had the nerve to switch it up and say something about 21 dollars and he was like oh the media bought up the 4.4 million he didn't even know how much it was and when actual in actuality is 20 million what 4.4 gonna do it's gonna do a lot because why the you ask for it if, if 4.4 ain't gonna do nothing my thing is why you need a mega church why do you need a mega church baby who you competing with are you competing for the Lord, are you competing with other pastors and other mega churches? Y'all got to stop this. Sh this is the reason why so many people sway away from the church. It's not that they sway away from the Lord because like they say, child, black folk forgot about everything and forgave everything about slavery except for the Christianity part that they shoved down their throats. But the fact that you would ask for this type of money and then switch it up and try to flip it to some other shit and try to act like at the end of the day, that's not going to meet the quota. Then why are you? ask for it y'all be killing me at these churches with this bullshit like what do y'all think about this leave me a comment let's talk about it and don't forget to hit the follow button toodles and my bad amen you just can't make this shit. you just can't make this shit. and because if they feel like sunday i'm gonna drop a dime on this one to expose this one there's a pastor by the name of of, of, of hendrix <laughs> Keon Hendricks. He's on social media. Listen to his story. He said God told him to ask 21 people, 2,100 people, to give him $2,100 each. I'll wait. He said God told him to ask 2,100 people to give him $2,100 each, which is equivalent to over $4 million. I'll do the math. Then he changed his story. He changed his story, changed his program, and he said, oh, I believe that some people don't have $2,100. So, I had to convict myself and go back. And God said, ask them for $21. Listen to some bullshit. You see, we, we all serve different gods. I understand that. We all have different beliefs. I understand that. But the God I serve, if he says something, that's done. That's final. That's it. He will not go back, change his word. Because why? The Bible say, my word will not come back to me void. Which is, it is what it is. But you have these people out here, they are deceiving people in these times. Do you know how many people were evicted in the month of July 2024? 96 9,600 people were, de were evicted in the month of 2000, July 2024. Yes, I do the math. I follow that shit. Do you know how many people are living on the streets today? 
Do you know how many people today can't find food to eat? Do you know how many people right now thinking about how they are going to pay their rent in the next two, three weeks from today? Do you know how many single moms are going through some motions? Single fathers are going through some motions concerning keeping roof over their head. Yes, I've done the math. We can't even count. Some people walk around smiling every day, but yet they are going through some stuff, financial stuff. Some people are out here smiling every day, but they are going through some financial stuff. And here we have people like Pastor Kendricks saying, God say this and God say that. Then come back and say, no, God say this, God say that. Ladies, gents, please, in times like this, do not, do not, do not give your hard-earned money. I don't care how little it is. If you want to pay tithes and offering, go to the man on the streets. <laughs> Give the man on the streets that $5, that $10, that $20. Stop your car. Give, Pay your tithes and offering to the man on the streets, to the woman on the streets, to the baby. Go buy a, a, a bag of grocery and give to someone. Whew, but you don't want to hear that. They ain't going to preach about that. If you want to give, go and do something tangible. Give in hand. Give love. Do not give your money to people who want to build these big buildings. Wicks, stones, glass. Just to say that I have this and I have that. And at the end of the day, they say, look what God gave me. They forget you support. They say, look what God gave me. I was once a big Bishop Jake's supporter. I supported Bishop Jake's ministry from back in the in the 80s. But when he got himself into that extra bullshit, that turned me off. That did. It did. Because some things we could avoid. Yes. I'm learning that too. Some things you can avoid. Some things you can stay away from. But I was once his, one of his supporters. And now I'm saying this. Ain't no one coming to your rescue. I always say the number one problem in America is housing. And ain't no one coming to your rescue because no one give a f about you. All right. So you guys just heard all of that. Now, a lot of comments were asking, why don't Keon go and ask Shawnee? I don't think that Shawnee even believes in his vision, keeping it all the way 100. And plus, she ain't loyal. No way. Look at what she did before she got married to you, cheating with a rapper and things of that nature. You know, she ain't fully invested. She got with him for, I don't know, whatever reason. Who cares? Right. But anyway, I think it's very insensitive for Keon to be asking people for money. Given the times that we are in, a lot of people are getting evicted. I don't know if you guys have seen the scene in Atlanta, but they're just throwing people out, throwing all of their things out in the front yard. It's just a sad situation right now. And for you to come out and ask people for $2,100 is equivalent to Oprah and The Rock asking the American people for money to donate to Hawaii but on a much lesser scale because we're talking about a billionaire in Oprah and The Rock has more money than you and Shawnee put together. So I just don't understand the logic behind it. And to be honest, there could have been a few members in your audience when you were begging for this $2,100 from all 20,000 members from your church and abroad that needed a loan probably from you to help cover expenses for them and their household so they don't lose anything. And you just threw a wrench in the game, begging them for money that probably most of them don't have. And I know that most of them don't have that money in this particular time. But anyway, guys, I'm going to draw the line here. I want you all to drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about all of this and everything that was discussed within this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share. And if you're new here, consider subbing to the channel. And I'll get with you guys in the next video. Peace.